What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel. First video of the new year. So happy new year to you. January 1st, 2023. And we have got a festive season log in present. So this is going to be a free epic player. There's 11 players up for grabs. It is random. So once you go into your inbox, I've already received it. Once you go into your inbox and claim it, you will then have a little one notification beside your contracts. And then go into special player list. And this is the list of players. Worldwide clubs. You will see you've got remaining one. And it is free. So this is the list of players here. Nesta, Guti, Van der Vaart, Deco, Robbie Keane. Andy Cole, Dwight York, Robson, uh, Morientes, Dida, and Paul Gascoigne, right? So there's a there's a nice mix of players here. Obviously, there's only one or two of these that are going to be, I would consider, like, meta, that are going to be upper, upper tier that will change your, your squad or will go straight into your squad. I would say Nesta is probably one of those. We'll have a look at that uh, player card in a second. Guti is also a very unique one. Deco's a very unique card as well. Um, Andy Cole is a fairly decent card as well. If you, if you take a look at some of his stats, Robson, uh, Dida is a good goalkeeper. Morientes has got super subs, so we won't sleep on him too much, but we're going to be training these guys up, showing you a training guide on all of these players, how I would train them. Don't worry too much about Max overall. I have another video coming on that soon as well. Um, and we are going to start with Yorkie, and then I'm going to do my spin as well. So for Yorkie, lads, right, there's a couple of issues with this card. First thing is, is that he doesn't have 90 in all team playstyle proficiency. Some of the cards, the epics do, but the, the earlier epics, the legacy epic cards, they, do, they don't actually have the team playstyle proficiency set at 90 across the board, right? We also have it that he's got standard form. And he doesn't have that many player skills that I would expect to have uh, with Yorkie's card. Obviously, this is a card. Look, we're not reviewing this as a brand new card. This card has been out before. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it because I've covered every player um, on this list before. But it's just to give you a quick training guide and a bit of recommendation of how to train him up. I think the biggest problem with this card, man, is his balance. Look, 58 balance that no matter what you really do, you're not going to get that balance up that high, right? When we go over to eFootball DB, we're going to have 37 levels to go, 72 trainer points there. And we're going to go 11 into shooting, 5 into dribbling, 14 into dexterity, and 8 into lower body. And that leaves us 1 then for whatever uh, play style we want to use. So a long ball counter gives us 90, um, or any of the rest of them are going to give us 80 team play style, right? But the problem with this card is, even with 14 into dexterity, you're still only going to get 72 balance. Like, that's a big issue with this card because of uh, his lack of physical contact and strength. Now, acceleration, offensive awareness is really high, but you've also got limited dribbling as well when you compare him to the god-tier cards such as Romario, Michael Owen, um, I would even say Mbappe. You know, like, he does have 88 finishing and 91 offensive awareness with 90 acceleration, which is awesome, but the balance is a big key uh, letdown for this card, in my opinion, and it does stop it from being, you know, a very viable option to lead the line up front. I'm sure some of you guys will, um, you know, do wonders with him, and if I do get Yorkie, I definitely will train him up for a super sub, even though he doesn't have super sub, but that is just my thoughts on him. Uh, we also have a Brian Robson here. Brian Robson is a very unique card uh, in the fact that he does have a lot of player skills, he does have unwavering form, so that's always good. Kind of reminds me of Paul Scholes, um, but he's got some very unique kind of player skills as well, such as heading, such as acrobatic finishing. You know, he wouldn't have been really considered a really top-class finisher, I suppose volleys and stuff like that. Um, but then all the rest of the passing skills that you get, one-touch pass, weighted pass, outside curler, fighting spirit for the defense side of the game. He's got defensive engagement quite high, aggression quite high. We can get that up a bit. Uh, long ranger and then he also has a long ball counter in the 80 uh, team play style proficiency but again when we go over to eFootball DB when we train him up we've got a lot of progression points to spend on this guy and he's got a really nice card right so what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be complimenting what he already has going for him give him 10 points into passing to get his passing and uh, low and lofted up fairly high we're going to bring this up to 80 his ball control we're just going to give four marks into dribbling that would be my uh, recommendation for him now you need to make a decision whether you want robson to be kind of like a box to box type player or you want him to be kind of like an attacking midfielder right that's two of the best ways that i can describe it if you want an attacking midfielder type center mid like a really offensive base center mid um then you need to probably focus on his dribbling a bit more his shooting a bit more and his uh, passing, right? And you don't need to worry too much about like his lower body strength, which brings up his speed and his stamina. You don't need to worry about that too much, right? 
But if you want him as an engine man, then you definitely need to worry about this because you need to worry about, you know, making him kind of like be able to cover every blade of grass and also having a, a few like defensive stats as well. So that is how I would train him if you're looking for like a Goretzka type player where you have everything going for the card. You've got a 95 overall Brian Robson. You've got 80 defensive engagement, excellent offensive awareness, excellent tight possession, dribbling, low pass. Everything is perfect for his card. And you've also got 85 speed with 95 stamina. That is a really, really good card. Now, if you are going to have him as an attacking midfielder, I would probably just give maybe six, maybe seven, eight into that. And then I would focus more on the dexterity, probably put up that to 14. And then I would probably put the dribbling up a little bit as well. You're still going to get a 95 overall, but you've got a vastly different card, including, you know, 84 uh, acceleration and 86 offensive awareness with much better dribbling. So that's just something to keep in mind if you are training up Robson, because he is a very unique card. And I think he's definitely one of the picks of him there. We've also got... Morientes. Now I have Morientes, lads. He's got 90 team play style proficiency, unwavering form. He's got super sub. People will laugh at Morientes and say he's not worth spinning in this if you do get him. But he is a fox in the box. He's got 41 levels to go. I think his card is really good. It saved me a couple of times with the card. He's got some nice player skills. First time shot is always good. He doesn't have any passing or dribbling skills as you would expect. He is just kind of like, you know, a one one trick pony really up front. Um but I actually do really like him. I must say, I actually do have good time for Morientes, especially this version of him. I think I definitely will be happy if I get him because, again, all you want from Morientes is goals. That's all you want. So we bring the finishing up or the shooting up to, to with 10 points. We don't need to worry about passing at the moment. Dribbling, we don't need to worry about that. We'll just give three into that just to make it all kind of even enough. The tight possession is probably the key. We don't need to worry too much about his dexterity or his speed. That's not really going to be a concern of ours right now. If we do have a couple of points, which we will have, actually, I probably would worry a little bit about his um, his balance just to bring that up to 70 and his acceleration. And then the rest we're going to be putting in to aerial to get that up to 90, uh, maybe a little bit higher, maybe 85 for physical contact. And then shooting, I think, is high enough at that. What we want is one more into offensive awareness. If you have a player that's slow, right, if you're not going to have an over 85 acceleration player, you need to have the offensive awareness quite high because that brings up all his runs, his AI runs, all that sort of stuff. And also the balance is key as well. So I would pump the rest into that and then I would probably put the rest into speed there, which gives us a very nice 95 overall card, 89 kicking power, 85 physical contact, speed and acceleration is fine, header, offensive awareness and finishing is all very good as well. So I think that that's a very good card to bring on as a super sub, it's a very decent car to have in your bench as well. We've also got Dida. I'm kind of torn on Dida, right? He's got standard form, which is a bit of a letdown for a goalkeeper. I think it's kind of a big red flag, uh, to be honest with you. But he does have long throw and low punt, which are my two favorite player skills. He doesn't have any play playing styles there. But the big problem with Dida, I think, is that I've seen a lot of uh, clips of him where he's making a lot of mistakes, right? So that kind of puts me off. Now, if I was going training Dida up, um he's got 33 levels to go all you're going to be focused on is the reflexes right so we'll get that goalkeeper reach up to 83 he is fairly tall so we don't need to worry too much about that i'll get the awareness up to that as well and then we're going to go the reflexes right so goalkeeper three we're going to go reflexes at least 92 so 14 points into goalkeeper three uh stats and then obviously we're going to try and get the rest up as high as we can go as well so 10 into goalkeeper two and then I would probably say, yeah, into awareness is probably key as well. I would even maybe take one or two off that because clearing and reach, he is tall enough that he doesn't need to be reaching uh, for too much. We also have two points left over that we can throw into aerial strength to get his jumping up a little bit as well. So that will help out with the reach um, with the aerial strength. 95 overall. Yeah, his form lets him down, I think, a little bit. And I've seen him make a lot of mistakes. But that's a fairly beastly keeper, man. I definitely think that's a beastly keeper. We've also got Paul Gasgoyne here as well. Um, he's got a fairly decent card. He doesn't have unwavering form, but he does have a lot of player skills. And this is a kind of a choice that you have to make with Paul Gasgoyne as well. It's similar to Robson. What type of role do you want him to play on your squad? Because if you want him to play as a kind of... I would... Listen, I would definitely recommend that you use Gasgoyne this way right i would train up his um his free kicks 
his curl, his finishing. I would use him as an out and out AMF because he's not going to have that blister and pace. His passing can go to 80. His dribbling can go to eight, over 80. And then you've got all these stats into 80 as well. You're going to have nice balance. You're going to have nice speed. You're going to have nice everything really with him. He's a very unique kind of player, right? So 10 into dexterity, 10 into lower body. And then I'm going to put 10 into shooting. And then I'm going to put the rest into passing. That's probably where I'm going to go with it as an AMF. Very solid AMF, lads. He's on B form, a classic number 10. You won't go too far wrong with this card, especially for the free kicks. Absolutely insane. With the curl, you're going to have to be using a lot of these kind of outside curler shots, long ranger shots, knuckle shots, um, just to be shooting around and just seeing how he actually does because he has got a very decent card. Now, moving on to the top layer of players here, the top level of players, we have got Andy Cole. So Andy Cole actually is a better card, in my opinion, than Yorkie, even though they're extremely, extremely... But again, he does have a couple of the issues as well that Yorkie has that make these players just not as good as the meta strikers like Romario and that, as I said, right? So when we are training him up, we're going to have 36 levels, 9 into shooting, 7 into dribbling, 14 into dexterity, and 8 into lower body. That's how I would train him. You do need to sacrifice the finishing a little bit. That's at 86 there. You also need to bring up the balance as much as you possibly can and the acceleration, the offensive awareness. So it's a very good card, but I just don't think that you're going to be replacing your Romario or your top class striker that's up front. Similar with Roy Ke Robbie Keane, right? I wish it was Roy, like. But Robbie, lads, he doesn't have unwavering form either, but he has got some really nice player stats, like really nice player stats when you take a look at his card here, right? Um, this is why sometimes when you take a look at a card, it can be... It can be deceiving, right? Because Robbie Keane has actually got some really nice stats if you look at him here, right? He's got really nice player skills and his acceleration and balance are really high straight off the rip. So when we do start to train him up here, we're going to see that kind of come into fruition for a top class striker that's going to have 90 balance, you know, 90 acceleration if you want it, 87 offensive awareness, and then the rest is going to be into shooting. You know, you, you don't need anything else really. 10 into shooting, 86 is enough into shooting. Don't worry about the passing, uh dribbling we're going to put six into that and then we're going to put the rest into uh his stamina and speed but that's a very good card i mean if i'm looking at that card there and i'm thinking right this guy has got obviously got the team play style so you need to you need to um you need to focus on that whichever you're going to pump up uh you'll have two points left over but you're going to have what 10 points into shooting and lower body strength 13 into dexterity and six into dribbling you're going to have 87 Offensive awareness, 86 finishing, 90 acceleration, and 92 balance. Now, if you wanted to, to train him in a slightly different way, right, you could obviously take away, because he's going to have 90 balance and 85 offensive awareness and 88 acceleration, you could actually train him up slightly different and just have his passing to be more of kind of a, a ball playing center forward that you're able to bring in other players. I wouldn't really bother. I would definitely just focus on the dexterity to get that acceleration up to 90. When you've got a player like this at 90 acceleration, it does make a huge difference. Now, moving on, we have Deco as well, trying to clean this, or, uh, clean this up, trying to speed this up a small bit. Lads. There is 11 players that I do need to focus on, so we've got four more, including Deco. Deco is a very interesting one as well. We have obviously got a card that is going to be trained in multiple different ways. He's got unwavering form. He's got excellent player skills. He's got excellent shooting, dribbling, and passing player skills. Everything you could possibly need and want for your creative playmaker. This isn't going to be like Brian Robson. This isn't going to be like Goretzka or Barella or Valverde or whoever you use in that midfielder role. It's not going to be a box-to-box -box type player. This is going to be a very, very kind of... Um, unique kind of like he's going to be set in stone as to what position he plays and it is going to be an amf like outright amf so when you look at his stats here the one thing that lets him down is his speed right so we need to get that up to about 70 and just leave it at that we also need to get his acceleration up to 80 his acceleration is important on this card because of the offensive awareness and the balance nothing else really matters you're not going to be looking for a speed option with deco because you're never going to get there now this is where his card comes really into his own, right? Eight points into that. And we're also going to go five points into that. Um, we're actually going to go more. I would probably go more into that to get the low pass up as high as you possibly can and get the loft to pass to 85. Shooting, because of his curl, you can pump up maybe four into that, maybe five into that to get to 80 so you can actually shoot some shots. And you still have a ton 
of um, progression points, even that card at that as a 92 rated uh, AMF is extraordinary because you don't need to train, change anything really. If you want to, obviously, you can get that up to 93, 90, and 90, and then the low pass is going to be 92, which is, you know, exceptional. And then also on top of that, you can also pump in the rest into dexterity if you want to get that offensive awareness up, the balance and the acceleration up. But to be honest with you, I would probably leave that card at that. That's going to be one of the best AMFs that you can make for Deco there. Similarly, we've got Van der Vaart. So again, this is a very similar card. I would say it's slightly better in terms of he's got some very unique player skills. The form obviously is at a tree as well. And the balance is better straight off the rip. So what you want in an AMF, you don't really need too much apart from like what it does and says on the tin. So we're going to focus on this. We're going to get this up to 90 uh, curl. So you're going to be able to just absolutely, you have to be able to be, you know, scoring curl shots with Van der Vaart if you are playing as Van der Vaart here. Low pass, I'll, I'll slightly not as high as Deco. We'll leave that at that for now. We'll see in a second. Dribbling, we want to get that up fairly high. We need that up fairly high. So we'll go to eight there. And then dexterity, we're going to go to 80. The speed is the big problem with this card and the stamina. So we're going to try and get that to 70. And that kind of ties our hands as to how else we're going to train this guy. Not forgetting about team playstyle. If you want to pop one into team playstyle there, you can. Um, and then it's just a case of, you know, how you're going to train up the rest of him. Like the speed is a big issue with this card. So because of that, we are going to have to focus on our passing, our dribbling and our shooting. We're not going to be, you know, that quick burst of pace and we're not going to be lasting the full 90 minutes of a game because of the stamina. Like, trust me, you just won't with Van der Vaart. So you do have to make a couple of concessions here. Um, I definitely would probably just take down his acceleration, maybe two, um, because you're going to save six points, seven points on that. And then I would probably just focus more on the passing to get that up as high as you possibly can and the dribbling to get that up as high as you possibly can. But again, a very good card, a classic number 10. Guti also falls into this. So I would play Guti definitely as an AMF. He's got a lot of levels to go. And I think Guti is probably the pick of the AMFs here. Forget about his shooting for a minute. We do have some good curl shots on this. We'll put four into it, but we don't need to worry too much about that. We're going to put 10 into passing or maybe nine into passing to get 85 and 87. Same with dribbling. We're going to have really, really good dribbling stats there um, to get that up as high as we possibly can. Just for now, we're going to leave it at that. Uh, Goody's actual speed is, is quite good with, with his stamina. So we're going to put eight points into that. And then we're going to put the rest into dexterity to get it up to 90. Now, you would never think that Goody as a center midfielder was, you know, very fast and he didn't have extraordinary uh, acceleration. But this card actually does have 90 acceleration, 91 uh, ball control, 89 balance, 82 speed. And then the offensive awareness is really good as well. So depending on how you want to train him up, I think having a 90 acceleration is probably a bit overkill. I would probably go 88, 87, and 83 for the offensive awareness. And then I would probably focus the rest on the dribbling. I'd probably put two into that to get the dribble into 90 and the ball control. And then I would probably put one more into passing to get it up to 86 and 88. And then I would probably actually focus on his speed to get that stamina up. That is an extraordinary card, lads. Absolutely insane card for a center midfielder. You're not going to be able to train him up as a kind of defensive-minded player. You definitely need to be playing him as an AMF. He's one of the best in the game at the AMF level and that is probably my pick of them in terms of all the midfielders there compared to Guti, Van der Vaart, Deco, Robson and Gazgoyne. I would say Guti is definitely the pick of them for his speed, his passing, everything he has, his player skills. The only problem that lets him down is his lack of unwavering form. It is on standard but everything else is absolutely perfection. Last but not least we have the main man Nesta, Andrea Nesta um he's got everything you could want lads he's probably one of the best center backs in the game i know i always say about the form right and his form is a bit of a pity he definitely like 100 percent should have unwavering form i don't understand it obviously because of a couple of injuries to him throughout his career he's not going to be you know like obviously he is going to have high he does have high injury resistance i know he had a couple of bad injuries but he was an extraordinary player man absolutely one of my favorite players ever to watch and when we train him up, we're going to see exactly how good he is. He has every player skill that you could want for a defensive, a, a defensive center back. He's a perfect height, perfect weight, perfect speed and acceleration. Jumping is excellent. Heading is excellent. And his defensive stats are out of this world, man. We'll see in a second. Sliding tackle, aerial superiority, blocker, interception, man marking. He also has one touch pass as a center back, which is extremely rare. Fighting spirit is huge as well. Long ball expert, so he's a bit of a ball player. 
And when we actually train him up, we've got 23 levels, 44 progression points, and you know where we're going to go with this, right? I've seen a few people ask me about defensive awareness and aggression and tackling. I'm going to be doing a video because I think aggression is one of the most important defensive stats, and that's the only thing that lets this card down. But you don't need to worry too much about it because of the player skills and because of the speed and because of everything else he has, right? So we're going to put four into aerial strength, eight into defending, we're actually going to put eight into speed to get the stamina up and the speed up. And then we're going to put maybe eight into acceleration as well. Because he has those stats um, that you are going to need, you know, to be like an absolute monster. Putting nine into defense and getting defensive awareness at 96, tackling at 95 and defensive engagement at 90 is huge. But you also got the speed and the acceleration. You've got jump. You've got physical contact and stamina. You've got header. This is probably one of the best center backs in the game, lads, based on his stats, based on everything, apart from the standard form. And that rounds off a 20 minute video where we've done every single player. So I'm just going to give a quick spin on mine and hopefully we're going to get Nesta, lads. Uh, if we get Nesta, man, he would be a huge addition beside Maldini center back and Puyol um, and a couple of the boys there that we get. But yeah, Nesta would be my pick or Guti. They'd be the two guys, but I won't say no to anybody here. Robbie Keane, it's not going to be Nesta. It could be Guti though. Could be Gooty, lads. He'd be a huge pull for me. Is it Gooty? It is. That's a huge pull for us, lads. The second best card on the pack. Huge. Huge. We'll take that, man. We'll take that. That's a huge one. I'm going to drink my tea. I hope you guys enjoyed this long 21, 22 minute video. That is huge. We're going to train Gooty up very, very quickly there. Um, and turn him into an absolute monster and I think having him as a as an AMF is going to be huge for me because he's just a different type of player um, than I'm used to having and yeah we can play him anywhere we want he's kind of like uh, a mix of a few different players so that is it for me lads happy new year don't forget to subscribe we are on the road to 25,000 subscribers and we will be back later with another video of Dream Team Chronicles you're not going to miss it you're not going to want to miss it I should say all right lads good luck peace